So today, what I'm going to show you guys is how to make, um, how do I say it? Um, it's gender reveal cookie. It's a prize cookie, what have you. Um, but normally, we've been seeing cookies done like this, and they have three cookies where you have one full cookie, just the outer ring, and then a full cookie on top. Well, now, we're just going to do it with one cookie, just one one cookie done and mm -hmm. if i cut this and i also did a star since you know fourth of july is this weekend i thought maybe cool. um but i'm going to show you how to do that we'll cut into mm -hmm. these later that way i'll show you the procedure and so on all right that sounds great i do want to let you guys know that most of the stuff i'm using here today you can find on my online shop um, okay. And as of Thursday, I am also going to be carrying Icing Images products, which Ooh. is the um, sheets um, and the smart sheets. And, you know, we're going to keep going and getting more and more from there. But most of the stuff that I'm going to be using today, you can find on my web page. Okay. So. And I'll put the link up for that. Let's get started. Um, I go into my refrigerator for a second to pull out my cookie dough that I have here already prepared. All right, what kind of cookies are we making? I'm just doing regular uh, sugar cookies. Now, I do want to let you guys know I do carry these powdered flavors. Um, if you want to flavor your cookies, you can. All you need is one tablespoon of this powder into your batter. And then it'll flavor it. We have a large variety of flavors. And and is that, is that the one that also colors it too? There's some that color it and some that don't. Oh, okay. That's cool. Okay. So I like my recipe for cookie dough um, does require to chill. So um, that's why I had my dough in the fridge. Okay. Okay. So here's my dough. Now. You want to make sure your cookie's leveled, okay? And if you're a cookie -er, you should already know. Here I have just flour with the sifter so that I can sift some flour, make it easier for my life to roll. Um, I am gonna be using the Sprinks roller and it is with the thickest attachment, um, which is 10 millimeters. You want the thickest cookie. Now, I understand that it takes a lot of dough and blah, blah, blah. Just remember, you don't have to make your entire order like this. You can do just a couple, especially if it's a gender reveal. Out of a dozen, make one with the gender reveal. Um, and we've all seen those egg gender reveal videos where they bunch crack their eggs in their head. Make everybody eat a cookie and only one person will have the gender. Or um, you can hear it. I mean, you can hear the. Okay, so here's my dough. I'm gonna roll it out to the thickness possible, the thickest possible. Okay. Okay. And again, 10 millimeter thick. Yes, I do understand it's thick. Okay. So here is my cookie, and that's how thick I have it. I rolled it out, and there's a reason for this. Okay. So now I'm going to cut it. I can use, because it's 4th of July, I'm going to do the, the star. Okay. okay. So it doesn't have to be a baby. It doesn't have to be a star. It can be a pumpkin for Halloween. It could be a clover for St. Patrick's Day. It could be a Christmas tree. It, you know what? Like art, there's no limit. Okay. So let's go ahead and cut out our cookie. Pull out the excess. Put that away. And then. With the circle, um, this is a tickle cookie cutter. Just go ahead and mark it. Don't squeeze it all the way in. You're just going to mark it. I found that marking it is a lot easier uh, than going freehand, uh, especially if you're doing a variety of cookies or a whole order, 12, six, uh, six cookies, a dozen or what have you. Then your, your freehand will get a little crazy. Um, but if you mark it, um, it'll be a lot easier to just go ahead and do what we need to do. And here you see the mark. 
It's very, yeah, very light that. mark. Yep, I can see that. Okay. Now, with the spoon, something delicate, you're going to push the dough in very little. Don't squeeze down. Don't go, um, you know, if you don't know your strength, you know, just be careful very, very lightly. You're going to push it in from the mark you made to the center. Okay, I'm going to show you before I do anything else, show you what I did. So you're just pushing it in. You see how it pops up a little? Yep. Okay. So okay. you're pushing it all around the edge. Just, yeah. Okay. okay. Just, and now I'm going to pull this off. Now you don't want to pull it all out. You just want a, um, a little bit. Now, the reason why you're pulling or taking dough out um, is because you can just squeeze it down, but then your baking is going to be off. Okay, because some parts are going to be thick with uh, much more dough than the outer parts. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's why you remove some dough. Okay. So you're just removing Huh? Stay there. You're removing it. And now I'm going to push the other, the leftover dough in. And I'm creating a cavity. Okay. Now, I want you to see, it's oh, like a yeah. swimming pool. It's just that. a little yeah. cavity, right? Yeah. Done. That's the trick. Okay. Now, we're going to bake our cookie. Now, before, I'm, I'm not, this is TV, you know, we work TV. <laughs> um, I, I do want to inform you on these maps. Um, this is my brand new cookie mat. Um, it's a perforated baking mat. Um, best for cookies, um, eclairs, and what have you. These were my old mats. I just wanted to be different, and I changed the color. Okay. The color doesn't matter on your mats. You can buy yellow. You can brown, brown, whatever it is. What matters on these perforated mats is the thickness. The thinner the mat, the more heat you're going to um, transfer into your cookie. So I did get a little picky with my mat, and I asked them to make it a little thicker. So this is the thickness, thicker one, and a different color. But the color does not matter. What matters is the thickness, and that needs to be clear, okay? Um, perforated mats were invented, I believe, in 1865. So there's not, this is not a recent thing. This is an old, old thing. Um, and I believe in knowing your, in educating yourself a way you can before claiming anything. So there you go. That's what I'm doing. And that's what I'm using. You can find my mat on cupcakes.com. Thank you very much. Oh, yep. now, I, just, I just put the link up for that. Oh, thank you. Yep. Um, this mat is for a quarter sheet. We are going to start getting, well, it's, um. okay, so again, let's educate ourselves. In reality, in the pastry world, this is a quarter sheet. But yep. in our lives, this is a quarter sheet. Does that make yep. sense? Okay. Um. The half sheets fit into your oven. Those are coming in. My mats are coming in for that okay. size. Okay. That one, I changed the color. So to be continued on that one. Right. Oh, man. Are you going to tell us what color it is? I will tell you when it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> um, you do want, and I also changed it so where the color on the outer side is going to be only a centimeter thick versus an inch all right um also rounded edges are perfect do not cut these mats because inside it is uh plastic that the um i can't even i'm having a brain fart right now with the oh, name fiberglass 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 you're right yeah. so inside there's fiberglass so if you know what fiberglass is if you cut it it gets into your skin it's yep. not that it's not a fun um thing okay 
So when you bake, ideally you don't want to bake over the line, um, but you can, you know, it's just ideally. Now you're going to bake your cookie as your recipe calls for. If your recipe calls for eight minutes, you bake for eight minutes. Your cookies are going to look like they're not done because that's what these perforated mats do. They make the heat go in um, evenly so that they bake it. Okay. Yeah, because this is TV, we already have some done. All right, woohoo, look at that. I did over bake a couple cookies because um, I wanted you guys to see the back of the cookie. Um, so I did this on purpose, <laughs> so sad, but that's TV for you, yeah. all right? Um, so, but this is ideally what you want, okay? A very light golden brown very very light golden brown you do get the cross stitch and even um bake yep okay and, and pepsi is what's tell them what the reason is they want to use the mats for the heat transfer okay so the when you bake the cookie on parchment paper yep. um parchment paper is a paper made of parchment um your back will look different, okay? Yeah. Now, uh, how do I say it? When I bake a cookie, when I decorate a cookie, I normally bake on the back side, okay? Yeah. So I like the even straight. Now, with the perforated backs, because the heat gets transferred evenly, you're going to get the even stroke, the even back. Yeah. No matter how your front looks. Okay. Okay? Does that make, did I answer that? Yep. yep. Uh-huh. Okay. So we bake that. Now I'm going to move the cookie stuff away and get into the decorating. Um, so I'm going to change masks. Okay. Room and my island is tiny. I don't have a big island like Lori does. <laughs> okay. So I have one baby um, onesie and then one star. So we can do one of each to show you how they're done. Okay. Um, once they're baked, this is what you get. Okay, okay, so it's got the hollow in there. Yeah. It's, it's hollow. Um, and if you see, I don't know if you guys can see it, but the light goes through very little, yeah. which is fine. Um, right. Yeah. Right. Now, I'm going to get my stuff ready. And what am I getting ready? Here I have Braille icing, and for what I'm going to be doing, I don't need a big batch of Braille icing. So I kind of wanted to cheat the system, and I'm using this. This is um, the Cookie Countess ready to use icing. Guess mm -hmm. what? You can find it on my webpage. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's Royal icing ready to make. You can use, make stencil stiff, you can make um, medium stiff, and then you can make bloody, and she gives you the recipe back here. I did not follow her recipe for this because I'm only going to use it. I'm only using very, very little. Okay. So I already have some done. And it's a little thick, which is fine for what I'm going to be doing. I can make it um, smoother just by adding a couple of drops of water. And it's just now Susan, my daughter, uses um the cookie countess royal icing black when she's doing stencil and she loves it. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Hold on. You mean this black? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. The black one. yeah, the black one is really, really good. Yeah. You don't have to it's add amazing. anything to it. Nothing. It's just, just water. water. It's just add water. Yeah. And then it's pitch black, acetyl black. It does not stain your teeth. Yep. So, okay. So for this, we're just using the white one. She, um, I carry the white, the red, and the black. 
Um, and then I'm, I'm only going to be using the eight inch tipless bags. Okay. And you know where you can find these? Yeah, Pepsi does. <laughs> On my webpage. That's right. okay. So I'm going to put some royal icing in here in my tipless bag. I don't need a lot because I'm literally going to use very, very little. And I'm using a tipless bag. Um, I find that the tipless bags are a lot easier to maneuver and to um, manipulate uh, versus the thicker ones. Uh, I only use the thicker ones if I'm going to pipe on a cake. Um, if you know me, you know that my wrists tend to hurt a lot. So this is a lot easier on my wrist. Okay. So I have my roll icing ready. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Over here. Okay. Let's see. What do I have here? I have boy sprinkles, like it's a boy, pink bow baby bottles, what have you, for it's a girl. Um, I have red, white, and blue stars for, you know, Fourth of July. I have the bumblebee sugar transfers. Let me show you guys what these look like up close they're super cute and they're made out of sugar cool they're edible 100 percent edible i did not make them okay and then we have a variety of, of um of the sprinkle spoons oh, flowers this is my favorite one this is my favorite one oh, look at that. it's look a cow them. it's a moo it's a cow really okay cute. And then I have, um, if you decorate it with royal icing on here, um, you always want to scribe. This one was gifted to me by our friend Joe. All right. So I really like that one. Yeah, and Joe, make, Joe makes some pretty scribes. <laughs> Joe is amazing. Yeah. We need, in addition, a rolling pin. Um, if you're going to decorate your fondant. I'm going to use fondant today. You can use roll icing. You could do a flooding method, but because it's a demo and we want to make it all, you know, easiest kit possible, I'm going to use fondant. Okay? okay. So here's like the presses that you can um, use. I'm only going to use these today. <laughs> now we're going to talk about paper. Actually, um, we have a question. Deb is asking, where do we get the scribes? I know the one you got that you're using um, Joanne Weineke made for you, but where could people scribes? Um, you know, a lot of people sell them. I don't sell scribes. Um, I don't know who sells them. Do you know people that sell them? Yeah. So if you go out on Etsy uh, and you just search cookie scribes, you'll find lots of them. <laughs> so yeah. there's small okay. ones, long ones, short ones. Yeah. There's all kinds. I honestly feel like everybody and their mother now makes them. So if you know any of your favorite cake decorator, I'm sure it's them. Okay, so I have here three types of paper. And I want to explain to you the difference between the three types of paper and the reason why I'm going to use a paper or the option of another one. Okay, so here I have the premium wafer paper. Um, I, I It's smaller than the ones that you get in the mail because I used it. I don't throw it away. I save my pieces. Um, you see it's like cracked, it's a little wet. And I don't throw them away because this is money and money is, you know, money, okay? Um, so this is a regular yeah. premium wafer paper. If you use paper potion, you get more movement out of it. Um, for this method, this is not ideal, okay? This is good for flowers, okay. for doing other stuff. The reason why this one's not good for this method is because it's a little too thin, okay? Um, if you apply oh, icing okay. on this one, it'll manipulate and it'll start warping, okay? Um, so that's why this one's not good for that. And if you know icing images, we have a variety of products, which some stuff work for some stuff and other stuff doesn't work for others. Okay, I use this for others. Okay, um, however, 
I see images. I don't know if you ever heard of that company, but I have. <laughs> they also have a wafer paper called Double D. Um, it's or 2D, right? Um, yeah. I don't remember the paper name. Uh, the reason why is that it's it's called double yeah. thickness. Double, double, D. double yeah. okay. It's a thicker wafer paper. It'll stand straight up versus the other one. It might like you know bend back or what have you. This one will stand straight up. This is thick. Yeah. This is a good paper for this method. Okay. okay. Now I'm saying this because I've already went through the process. I've done it. So this one worked this process. Now, how is it? What's that mean? They say, trust the process. Okay. Yep. Another paper that we carry is called a smart sheet. Let me show you how it's spelled. It's called smart sheet. Okay. Yep. Have you heard of this paper? I hope you have because this paper is, um, for example, icing sheet and wafer paper got married and they made this. Um, and if you know the reproduction system, some are good and some are bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a smart sheet. It has two sides. One's a canvas side. One's a shiny side. You can print on either side. This paper res is um, more resistant to water than wafer paper. Okay, I hope that I hope that's clear. Yeah. You know what have you? Um, this paper is perfect for royal icing covering um, a cookie. Also for the fondant. Why? Because it's more durable. Okay. Okay. Hey, Cindy. All righty. So. Because I love to print on my smart sheets, I'm going to save my smart sheet. I'm actually going to use them tonight for a, um, a Jason paper. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and move forward and use my double D wafer paper. Okay. Okay. So, any questions on the three papers that we pulled out? No. I don't have any um, questions, but. But that's that's good to know that you can use like the double density or the smart sheets. And I'm gonna say because you're you're probably using one that you've cut before, you don't need a lot. Right. You don't need a lot at all. Um <clears throat> so the circle that we marked on the cookie was the little one. I'm gonna I grab the next size up on the circle if you see. Um, okay. And that's the marking I'm going to use for the wafer paper. Okay. I am going to use um, an edible marker. Okay. So please re, um, how do I say, stay away from a non toxic. A pencil is non toxic. A marker is non toxic. A sharpie is non toxic. Stay away from that. Um, you know, that just means that, you know, a little bit won't do you any harm, but in the long run, it may. Okay, so yep. you know, just try to get anything that's edible. Okay, so this is an edible marker. I'm just gonna mark my circle, and I did it very poorly. I'll show you. I felt like I'm barely learning how to write. I just marked it, and now with scissors that you only use for edible products, cut out this circle. Now, what I'm doing is I'm getting my item ready. You want to have everything ready before you start doing the process, okay? So there we go. I'm going to do two, right? I'm doing the gender reveal, and I'm also doing the 4th of July, right? Or the star, whatever you want to call it. Also, you want to make sure that your circle, your outer pattern, is not bigger than your cookie. Because if, you know, there's a problem if you, if you didn't do that. Okay. Now we're going to cut the circle on the wafer paper. And it doesn't have to be okay. perfect. However, try to avoid squares um, with corners. Um, avoid squares because if the Oh, if the um, square lives, it's going to damage if you're doing a royal icing flood. 
um, it's going to damage your real life. Okay. okay. So now I have my papers right here ready. And now what am I going to do? I'm going to attach it. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use my pretty sprinkle oh, spoon. Oh, use your sprinkle. Fill my holes. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Do we want to make it a boy or a girl? I think Lori has like 10 million grandsons. So let's do a boy. Yeah, let's do a boy. <laughs> Here we go. You want to be generous when you're applying your sprinkles, but you don't want to be like you're feeding a community. You want to be. Um, <laughs> you know, you have to give it. Enough. Give them but enough. Not, not, not. Yeah. Right. Okay. You want to give them enough so that when they pop it, stuff falls out. Okay. Um, okay. And then the Fourth of July, do some stars in here. Okay. Okay. And then you know, Fourth of July in a couple days. So let's get it ready. So here I have my roll icing in my bag that I already prepared. And I'm just going to cut out very small amount, okay? Um, a very small tip. And you want to put it in a in a bag. I always go away with the tip because I've had a tip fall into a dessert before. Okay. Yeah. So just very thin. Make sure your sprinkles are within the circle. And then on the outside of the circle, go ahead and do a little you know, a roll icing, uh, you know, you're going to glue. This is your glue. Okay. So we're using a royal icing as glue. You're going to put the wafer paper down. Oh, look how easy that is. That's it. Wow, okay. That's super easy. What the piñata, like, you know, for piñata, for Cinco de Mayo, they created a yeah, I really like that because all the ones I've seen, they've got two or three cookies stuck together. And they're way too thick. Yeah, exactly. Even if you cut the cookies thin, then there's still like two or three of them stuck together. They're really try to get a, You see yeah. this? Okay. Because yeah. I know that my island is a little off. Okay. And then make sure that your, your paper is down. Obviously, okay. Doing it in the air is not as easy. Then doing it down. Okay. Now, ideally, you want this to dry. Okay. If you're going to do the raw ice in that blood, you want this to dry completely. You need it to dry. Uh, your your icing on the outside needs to be dry before you start flooding on top of it. All right. Um, because if not, you might have a little surprise there. Okay. But because we're only going to do fondant. Um, you can go ahead and move forward. Here I have my fondant. Here's my okay. fondant. I always have to use gloves, but I'm not going to today. Okay. Any questions as of now? So this is like a super easy and it's not no too much to it. But Susan said to say hello. Hey, Susan, she landed? Yep, she landed. Good for her. That's good. That's good to hear. Okay, so let's go ahead and roll out some fondant. Um, here I have my white fondant. And in here I have cornstarch. Ah. So I'm just going to dab my other mat. And... Make sure you get your air bubbles out of your fondant before you start rolling out and anything. Now, you should, well, if you're not good at, like, um, gauging your stuff, go ahead and use the little wheel, wheels on the, on the fondant. And do not too thin, but not too thick. Does that make sense? Um, I need to talk to that to wing. Somebody's at my door. Okay. So, but I'm, I'm going to wing it. Okay. Mm. Um, now, here is good. If I have an air bubble, go ahead and use your scribe. Pop that little guy out. Pop that little guy out. And try to always keep the tips to your scribes um, because if you, like, drop it or something, it, it'll bend. And then your scribe is not as good as it used to be. 
All right. So before I cut my cookie, I'm going to stamp it. Okay. Um, here I have a donut, and here are the patterns. I'm going to use the donut. They're cuter. Um, Jesse Ann wants to know what fondant are you using? Um, I live in California, which I feel like that is a very important um, issue. Um, and my fondant to go to is uh, Fondex. Okay. Fondex from Cal Java. Fondex from Cal Java, yeah. Okay. So, again, if you need to cut your fondant, use a plastic knife. Don't use exactos to cut, especially on your uh, silicone mat. You don't want to damage them or cut them. Okay. Um, I need my cookie cutter. So you're going to use the same cookie cutter that you use to cut it out. You want it to be the same size. So here is the onesie. Here's the onesie. That one's ready. So I'm just going to set it aside. And I'm going to cut out the stars. The star. Again, make sure you need it. Get any air bubbles out or what have Okay. Any questions? No, not yet. Okay, we're just about done. This is not, it doesn't take a long time. Okay. Oh. I do know that um, Icing Images introduced a new product at IBIE that you could use with oh. your fund. What was that? Oh my God. Um, you know, it's this thing called a fondant roller. <laughs> right? Ooh. So that yeah. roller is ideal for a home baker um, because it's not that big. Um, it won't take yep. up a human at your dining room table or anything. Um, it's it's a great size. Um, we did a large, we did a, a lot of videos unboxing yep. it, um, using it. Um, so if you, it's like what, $2,300? Yep, I think that's what it is. Uh, what we're talking about is the, the new um, fondant sheeter or fondant roller. Um, Icing Images does have one now. And so I'm going to put the link up to it if you're interested in one. Um, there, It was awesome. And we had a lot of fun playing with it. <laughs> And everybody should have one. <laughs> right. Um, I have a question on my Instagram. The question was, does the cookie spread using um, by mat? Now, it, the mat doesn't matter the spread. What matters is um, the dough that you use. However, the mat should bake it evenly. Yes. Um, my cookies tend to like with my dough, it tends to like pillow up um, or what have you, but they don't really spread. And I've never had a problem with that. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to use my, uh, my leftover roll icing as glue. And I'm just going to go ahead and place it onto the cookie um, and glue down the fondant. Okay. Okay. If you're not good at eyeballing it, because um, you can just put it on the fondant back, put it in the back of the fondant. You know, you can act like Picasso and just go all over the place. Yeah. There you go. <clears throat> and I'll go ahead and put it on. There we go. And I'm going to put a bumblebee on the onesie because it's like, you know, what will it be? Yeah, that it's really cute. cute. Yeah. The theme. Ah! Okay. Done. Okay. So here's your cookie. <laughs> oh, <you're> just... <laughs> my dogs heard your toys. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so here's 
the, super the cookie. Cute. Super simple. And it's can hear. Oh, I can hear it. It's rattling. Okay, awesome. So now I'm gonna get another one. Well, I can cut it. It's just that if they're not dry. Yeah. Um, let me cut one of the ones that are that are already dry. Let me get money. My eyelid needs to be a little bigger for this. Can you see it? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yep. All right. So let me get a knife and I'll cut them. Let's do this one. Um, I don't remember what I did, so I don't know if this is a boy or a girl. Um, you know, because this is what I did for the pictures. So we'll see. We'll, figure, we'll find out. All right, what does it be? What does it be? Ah! It's a boy. Those are so cute. And then I'll see the inside, the hole. Yeah. It's not, it wasn't that much. The cookie's still baked. Yeah. Um, nice. The paper holds the uh, fondant up. Um, Again, this is a double density paper that I use for this, the double density wafer paper. Super um, it, it maintains the cavity. So cute. Okay. Yeah. Now let's do the 4th of July. That worked out so cute. Here we go. Didn't cut it all the way. I'm gonna hold the cookie. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, look at there. How cute is that? See? So mm. that is a different way of doing these and, uh, surprise cookies, piñata cookies, gender reveal cookies. You can name it whatever you like. Um, yeah. That's you know, really you, cute. You have to use the wafer paper or the smart sheet. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, the glue and sprinkles. Yeah. Any questions? Super cute. Done. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna 